you already learned some basics about Kerberos. I talked about the six-step Kerberos authentication process in my earlier video. In this video, we will install and configure a Kerberos server and then we will use the Kerberos to enable authentication on our Hadoop cluster. In a real production cluster, you may have a dedicated machine to host Kerberos server. But I have a single node Hadoop cluster and I will install and configure Kerberos on the same machine. That should be reasonably good for the demonstration purpose. So, let me outline the overall process. Ok, we'll follow these steps. We need Kerberos client and utilities on every machine in the cluster. You can install them using below command. Ok, now we need a Kerberos server. Since I have a single node cluster, so I'll install Kerberos server on the same machine. You can install it on any other machine in your cluster. Here is the command to install Kerberos server. I'm assuming that you already installed the client on the same machine. So, we'll just install the server. The next step is to configure Kerberos. These are two configuration files. We use these files to define a Kerberos realm and configure it. You might be wondering what the heck is this realm? Well, just think of it as a namespace. The realm is a logical boundary within which the Kerberos has the authority to authenticate someone. So, just think of it as a name and create one realm for the Hadoop cluster. But remember that the name of a realm is case sensitive. So, we use kdc.conf to define the realm. Let's do it. The first section is for some port numbers. We leave it as it is. The second section is where you define your realms. We already have an example entry. Let's change it to some meaningful name. You can give whatever name you want, but let me give it a name based on the cluster name. A realm should have its configurations including the location of the KDC on the network and supported encryption algorithms. These other settings are to define some of those values. We don't change them. The default values are good enough for our demo. The second part of the realm configuration resides in the next file. Ideally, they should merge both the configuration files, but as of now, they are two different files. So, let's open the other config file and define few more realm settings. We change the default realm name and make our realm as default. The next two settings are very critical. Let's look at the first one. You need to specify the Kerberos server location that your realm will be using, right? So, I create an entry for my realm and replace these values with the host name of my KDC server. Now, the second one. We need to tell that how to translate a host name to a realm name. I mean, this entry tells me that which machines are part of this realm. So, any host name under dot learning journal dot local is part of this realm. What does it mean? It means node one dot learning journal dot local, node two dot learning journal dot local, or xyz dot learning journal dot local. All are members of the same realm. The next entry says that even the learning journal dot local domain is the member of the same realm. That's all. We completed the configuration. So, we installed KDC server and configured the realm. The next step is to create a KDC database for this realm. You can do this using following command. This command should ask you for a database master password. It is important that you don't forget this password. The Kerberos encrypts the database using this master password. 
If you want to restore KDC database from a backup or restart the database, you will need this password. It may be fine to enter the password at the time of database restore. But supplying this password on each restart is a problem. So, to avoid that, we create the database using minus "-s", option. The minus "-s", option will create a stash file to store the password. The KDC will automatically use the password from the stash file on each restart. Kerberos database maintains identities. Then, it assigns tickets to these identities. In Kerberos terminology, we call them principal. A principal in Kerberos is made up of three components. Here is an example. The root is the primary, admin is the instance, and you already know the realm. The instance part is optional, but remember that the root and the root admin are two different principles for Kerberos. Good. Let's come back to the next step. The next step is to update the ACL file. We'll just change the realm name. This line says that any user with an admin instance should have all types of access. You already know that star is a wildcard, right? Okay. Now we should create an admin for KDC. We will use kadmin.local utility. This tool works only on KDC server. You can't execute it from client machines. Okay. We have a kadmin prompt. We want to add a principal with an admin instance. So, use the add print command. Set a password. And done. Great. We are now ready to start Kerberos and test it. Let me start the KDC and the Kerberos admin server. I want to make sure that they restart automatically over a reboot. Great. You are ready to use Kerberos. You can use the klist command to check if you have a ticket in your cache. Nothing, right? No problem. I can get a ticket using the kinit command. Let's check the cache once again. Good. So I have this TGT. But as of now, I have got just one principal in my KDC database. If you want to create few more principals, you can use kadmin command. Earlier, we used kadmin.local utility. But since we have started Kerberos admin server, now we can use a standard kadmin tool. Let me show you. Give your password. Good. So we are at the kadmin prompt. The command for creating a principal is same as we used earlier. This time, I am creating a standard user without any instance. Since the user dev doesn't have an admin instance, she won't be able to use kadmin. Okay, one final note on Kerberos. Once you are done, you can use kdestroy command to remove your tickets. That's all about setting up Kerberos server. Rest is simple. You can use Ambari Kerberos wizard to enable Kerberos on your cluster. I'll cover that part and few other things in the next video. Thank you for watching Learning Journal. Keep learning and keep growing.